We welcome you into week five of the Ken Spark Show. Carson Newman falls at home to the Lenore Ryan Bears 20 to 17. Hello everyone, I'm the voice of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier, alongside Carson Newman head football coach, Ken Sparks. Ken, a very frustrating uh, week five game. Uh, fifth straight defeat at the hands of Lenore Ryan. This was wow. a team that, uh, in the Bears, that was struggling a little bit coming in, but did enough defensively. Uh, and really, it, it was a slow start. First 15 minutes of the game uh, were decisively in LR's favor. What happened at the start? Well, I really don't know <clears throat> because we made such an emphasis about playing fast and, and playing the first five minutes as, as, as explosive as we could because, <clears throat> and, you know, you, you know psychologically uh, that uh, Lenore Ryan had some doubts because of the way they played last week. And... Uh, uh, some doubts in themselves, and then for us to uh, to start off like we did, you know, I don't know. I I so know, and uh, I don't know what was going through our minds. I don't know exactly. Uh, I just know this: that um, the head football coach is responsible for that. You know, having this team prepared to play, and um, I know I can't play for them, but at the same time, I can do a whole bunch of things uh, to try to encourage them and and get them to to not do stinking thinking about it you know and um, tried hard but um, evidently I'm uh, I didn't hit the right button or I'm not connecting or something so uh, and if you know and if I'm not careful I get on a pity party mm -hmm. uh, because of uh, you know and, and it's not about me uh, it's about it's about them and it's about uh, the the great thing of it is that bottom line it comes down it's about honoring the Lord with yeah. uh, how we handle this, you know, and how we respond to this. And uh, He's a sovereign God. It that, uh, that doesn't mean that He uh, He blesses missed blocks and missed tackles, you know, but it does mean that, that eventually He understands every little detail of all this and that He uh, can use it in a way that will help us grow and develop as, as people. And, and that's, that's my hope. Otherwise, uh, there's not much out of this one that, that we can get that's worth having. Uh, and, and second of all, if, 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 uh, if this is the best we got to build on, then we're in trouble. Because uh, yes, we, we did some things good uh, at times, but not many times and not many things good. And so we got, so we got some work to do. Carson Newman falls to Lenore Ryan 20 to 17. We'll break down the first half after these messages on the Ken Spark Show. Welcome back on the Ken Spark Show. Eagles fall in week five of the season to the Lenore Ryan Bears. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head coach Ken Sparks. Ken fall into a 14 nothing hole. Uh, early in the the second quarter, uh, really it seemed like the tone was set for your team. A batted ball, Joe Harris uh, gets a nice defensive lineman in interception, uh, but the next play give the football back on a fumble. How, it, did that? How much did that affect? Things? That was huge. <clears throat> that was huge. You know, and it happened more than once in mm -hmm. the ball game. The defense did a good job two or three times getting three and out and uh, holding them. And uh, I don't know, they might not be in three and out, but at least they held them. And forced a punt, and uh, you know, and then we fake a punt, you know, and you would think that would be a, an impetus to, you know, if we'd made something out of that, I think it would have been pretty special if we'd made something out of the fumble. That, I mean, the interception that Joe got, I think it would have been special. Uh, but we, you know, I don't know, we just we we never could uh, put doubts in their minds at all and get us to where we were celebrating a little bit. We were, <laughs> we were playing non-celebratory football most of the day, you know, and that's not good. You talked about developing based off of this game. Uh, where does this factor in, in the laboratory of learning? Well, it's, uh, <clears throat> it's like everything else. We have a choice about how we respond to that. Like any disappointment in our life, we have a choice about it, you know. Uh, do we uh, get um, on a pity party like <laughs> like I'm trying to do right now, you know? <clears throat> or do we, uh, do we say, uh, uh, Lord, you're trying to teach us something. We couldn't learn it differently. We couldn't learn it better any other way. 
uh, we, we need this so that we can grow into the people you want us to grow into because that's what's important. It's not that scoreboard down at the end of the field, even though I'd like to change the sucker. Uh, you know, it's about something much bigger than that. It, it's much, much bigger than that. And if we can see the big picture, then, then we'll get something out of this. If we don't, then this one here may take us to another level that we don't want to be on. I don't know. It's, it's, it's our choice. So, you know, it depends on what we want to do with it. Still, you had some adversity flung in your face with, in this one. Carson Wise goes out with an injury. Uh, Wednesday. Wednesday, so <laughs> yeah. you're without your starting place kicker. Uh, Noah Suber, starting quarterback, goes down with an injury late in the first half. How much did that affect the flow of the game? Well, when it's uh, your only quarterback with any game experience, you know, then that's pretty major. And, uh, uh, and unfortunately, our games that we've played so far, there's only been one that we've had a chance to have uh, a, a good backup rotation, you know, uh, because the game was on the line. And uh, and that's, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to have to apologize for to Tyson Heron. You know, he's worked hard. He knows this offense. Uh, I thought we was going to have to throw it down the field. And so consequently, I thought uh, uh, there was other options. But uh, I, he needed to play in this ball game. Because uh, he's too good of a leader and too good of a person not to be playing in this ball game, and uh, so I think that could have helped us. Uh, we had a c couple of offensive linemen that were struggling like crazy. And of course, you know we we're starting two freshman defensive tackles that, because the ones that had a little bit of experience are hurt not playing, and so well, they hadn't played all year, which creates a little bit of an issue. But I could go on and on and on with that one, and you know what? It, what it is, it's nothing. The excuses that I'm giving you are nothing if we play with the heart that we're capable of playing with and if we play with, the, with, the, with who we really are, uh, then, then uh, what I'm talking to you about is absolutely nothing. Take a look at the first half highlights. Eagles trail 14 to seven at the halftime break. First from the left hash at the Eagle 23 yard line. Running back either direction. Two men to the short side left, low man wide side right. Scott keeps it, no. It's a pick that's batted into the air and is picked off. LR went for the trickeration, but the Eagle there and Joe Harris out of miles, snatches it. Snap back. Keeper for Scott, he's backfield and the Eagle suit gets there as he tries to kick it out to the left side. Jerry McLeese finished him off after Lane Bloom caught him in his grasp. And Scott loses big time yardage. Too wide in the game to the wide side left with the man in motion, Bill Pop motioning that direction. And off Brown straight ahead. He surges into the end zone. Touchdown Bears. To the short side left, that's DeBose. Super under center split backs. It's a draw. Left side for Jamal Jones. Shakes the man at the 25. Jones on his horse. Leaps for the end zone. No signal yet, Mr. Referee. There it is. Touchdown, Carson Newman. JJ Jetplane takes to the skies and gets into the end zone on the 27 yard score. Keller takes now a shotgun snap. It's low, bobbled. He'll hand off to Brown, doing no favors to his running back. And Ross Pryor shoots in and knocks him back into LR territory, back at the 49. Bad snap, minus seven on the play. Formation for Keller. Takes the snap. He'll hand off right side to Brown. Good pressure for the Eagles. They'll get him in the backfield for a loss. Phelan Booker storms through and drops him back at the 46. LR stuck in reverse. Minus three on the play. Those are the first half highlights. Eagles trailing at the break 14 to seven. Uh, Ken, a game where uh, the offense really couldn't get on track, but the defense had its issues in the first quarter, but after that only gave up 150 yards of total offense to the Bears, the final three stanzas. Uh, what positives you, do you take from the defensive performance? Well, I think we uh, got a key on what, they, what their total intent was. You know, they threw two passes the first half and I think six passes the whole ball game. And so they were going to line up in a lot of two and three back offense. and two tight ends, sometimes three tight ends, and they were going to 
uh, you know, just come out at us and try to eat clock and great plan because that's exactly what they did. And uh, they used a lot of clock and they got a lot of first downs running the ball. Uh, but after we kind of first quarter adjustment got out of the first quarter and, and somewhat into the second quarter and the first part of the second quarter wasn't any better. But then we finally started tightening down and uh, and I thought we were okay. At, at, at halftime, I said, you know, uh, okay, we're over the hard part and, and we'll get this thing going because we were getting some things offensively that we needed uh, but just weren't able to execute it. It was back to that same old thing that nine guys or ten guys were getting the job done and one guy was absolutely uh, getting destroyed. And uh, we got a very poor performance in in three or four different areas this ball game and you know if you get a poor performance in one area you might have a chance but when you start getting it in three or four you're probably climbing a mountain that's got some loose rocks that's going to hit you in the head and that's exactly what happened to us this ball game carson Newman falls to lenore ryan 20 to 17 we'll break down the second half and by the way performance performance this Art. dude this dude, no, not no, heart. heart. This, this dude. dude, bad performance, bad performance. Take a look at the second half when we come back after this on the Ken Spark Show. Welcome back on the Ken Spark Show. The Eagles fall in week five to the Lenore Ryan Bears 20 to 17. I'm Adam Cavalier alongside Carson Newman head football coach Ken Sparks. Ken, a second half where your squad started to rally behind a freshman quarterback, uh, but it was really big play situations that that ignited uh, you back into a tie game at 17-17. Antonio Wimbush with a long punt return, uh, and then Sahim Stupart and Braxton Butler combined to recover a fumble in LR territory. Uh, what did you think when those two big plays happened? Well, of course, in a game like that, you're looking for anybody to make one play that would turn a game around. And uh, <clears throat> you're looking for, you know, you're looking for uh, difference making plays and we had very few of them in this ball game, but we had some opportunities for a whole bunch more than we made uh, if we had just uh, had everybody on the same page, you know, as far as uh, being at the right place at the right time. And uh, uh, we really took a backward step, and you know, and poor old Coach Turner, he and the offensive coaches, they worked like crazy this week and had a great plan, and we just didn't execute parts of it and. They didn't give Lenore Ryan credit. Mm -hmm. You know, they came out and played very, very well and came into the ball game saying they was leading the conference. They left here leading the conference. So, you know, give them credit. Uh, they did some things that uh, they played harder than we played. How much was it their defensive front causing issues for well, the offensive line? For their front seven with the linebackers and the outside linebacker number seven, they did an unbelievable job. They were swarming the ball and flying to the ball and uh, and when we lost Noah we lost some of our opportunity to to check into some things and do some things maybe that we would have done mm -hmm. if he'd been in there and I'm not saying that to take anything away from uh, from our from Derek our little freshman because he's gonna be great one of these days and uh, he just don't have game experience you know yeah. and so uh, and that's uh, uh, we just needed somebody to to make a play. At the end when we needed a great punt, which he'd punted great all day, then we get a 25 yarder. Yeah. You know, which gave them field position to come down and kick a field goal. And uh, so, I mean, you know, we just, those kinds of things uh, for a coach kept me from sleeping and, uh, and, and makes me think that I'm not near the coach that some people think I am. And so, come on, come on Sparks. Carson Newman falls to LR. We take a look at the second half highlights. To the Eagles. Evans takes. Quarterback sneak. He's got the push. Does he have pay dirt? Yes! Touchdown! Carson Newman! 17-13. Bears by four as Evans draws the Eagles closer on the quarterback sneak. A short field set up by Antonio Wimbush's 38-yard punt return. Eagles will run a fake, snap to the up back, Wimbush, and he converts on a gutty fake punt call on fourth and four. 
Jay Wiley stops him up at the 26. Oh, the cojones on the Eagles to go for it on fourth and five from inside their own 20. 7.41 left in the fourth quarter. Manning's hold is down. King's kick is a line drive that bangs through the uprights. It's good. Jonathan King, not his usual work, but he finishes from 37 yards out on a field goal try, and the Eagles tie it at 17 with 7.36 left in the fourth quarter. Try to 35-yarder from the left hash. Snaps back, hold is down, the kick is on the way. It's end over end, and it's through. Hunter Hare connects on the 35-yard field goal, bears up 20 to 17 with 59 seconds left. He's in front, 53 seconds left. Evans takes on second and 10, straight drop, zips for Williams, and it is picked off. The Bears' Sherrod Williams with it along the right sideline, stops at the 10 and gets brought down by Derek Evans, who clasps his helmet in frustration, grasping his face mask after he makes the stop down at the eight. Those are the second half highlights. Carson Newman falls to LR. When we come back on the Ken Sparks Show, Michael Watrang shines our Eagle spotlight on Carson Newman wide receiver Lonnie Williams. That's when we return after these messages. Time now for our Eagle spotlight on the Ken Sparks Show. And this week, Michael Watrang puts it on Carson Newman wide receiver Lonnie Williams. College football can be a long journey to the playing field. No one on Carson Newman's team exemplifies this more than junior wide receiver Lonnie Williams. In his first season in the blue and orange, Williams was the scout team quarterback that was nowhere close to playing time on Saturdays. Two years later, Williams is an All-American and a two-sport star. Track coach and former CN football assistant David Needs helped recruit Williams to be an Eagle. I met Lonnie when he was a senior in high school, and you could see that he, he wanted to do something with his life. You know, he, 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 he wanted to not just be defined by what he did in high school, and I think so Lonnie was always willing to be involved in some way or some capacity, even in track, he always tried to find a, he's trying to find a way to contribute. But I think that what's made him mature is, is that he handles criticism better. I think he handles um, the way that he can push himself a little bit better. He, he understands where that limit is or that line is. is it, it's okay to cross it and go, go past it. And I think when that's done that, it's opened so many doors to him because now as a kick returner, his athleticism can show. As a wide receiver, he can find a way to get open and he understands the little things a lot better and has made him a better student of the game, which has made him a better player. Williams believes that his time at quarterback aided him in learning the Carson Newman offense as he watched three years starter DeAndre Thomas run the show. Really, I just wanted to play so bad. So when they told me that, I actually was happy. Like coming into college, I figured that since I was so little, in short, that I wouldn't really play quarterback in college anyway, so I was prepping myself to play the slot. It's really what I would expect it after the first year. Classmate Darvier DeBose also made the switch from quarterback to wide receiver. DeBose has seen Williams grow on the field as their relationship morphs off of the turf. You know, me and Lonnie, we kind of like brothers. You know, we came in, we stayed on the same hall as freshmen. You know, we, we talk every day. It's just. Something that both of us went through is, you know, transition from quarterback to receiver. Lonnie comes into practice every day and he works hard and, you know, he runs his routes hard and catches plenty of balls after practice and he just comes in and puts in the work. Williams attended the same high school as Needs, Mount Pleasant in Wilmington, Delaware. In 2014, Williams led the nation in yards per kickoff return, returned two kicks for touchdowns, and became the first Eagle since 1999 to be an All-American as a return specialist. His path is the blueprint for future players. I think you look at Lonnie, you look at this, it's a, it's a similar story to other players that we've had here at Carson in the past, that what they what they need to do is, is if they settle for where they think they are, then they're always going to be there. But if they have a vision for where they want to be, where God has is, is, is called them to be, and then decide, hey, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get on the field. I'm going to push, I'm going to practice hard, I'm going to find a way to contribute if they need a volunteer for this. It may mean that I'm out of my comfort zone, but it's a chance to play. The junior has two 100-yard receiving games in 2016, as his career has come full circle. Despite having numerous other offers out of high school, Williams reflects on his decision to come to Carson Newman. 
where I'm from, a lot of people don't really make it out too much. So for me to come up here, I'm in this good environment. I've become a better man since I've been here. Uh, the coaching staff is great. They all care for you, like outside of football. So it's like you got father figures away from home. Need summed up Williams' personality by saying he is one of those players that will do anything for the team's success. From a scout team quarterback to an All-American, Williams has his sights set on championships for the Eagles. For the Ken Sparks Show, I'm Michael Watrang. All right, thank you very much, Michael Watrang and Ken Sparks' Lonnie Williams. Uh, uh, an interesting guy who came in here. His first career ki uh, kickoff return was a touchdown, and he seemed to have uh, grown more from a kick returner now as your leading receiver this year. Well, uh, he has grown a whole lot, uh, not only uh, as a football player, but as a person. And he's uh, starting to learn how to practice a little bit harder and do some things that will help him be a better player and to be a better leader. Because he has the capabilities of being a leader. And, uh, and, and there's times when he shows that big time. And uh, I'm glad he's on our team. I hope that he continues to grow and and develop into the man God's created him to be because he's created him pretty special. Mm -hmm. And uh, and uh, you can't keep from liking a lot. You'd like to spank him every once in a while, but you can't keep from liking him. And I, I really have a high regard for Lonnie and, and the progress that he's made. Turn your attention now to Paul Hamilton's Brevard Tornadoes, uh, a team that picked up its first NCAA win uh, in a little over two and a half seasons a couple weeks ago. Uh, Always a team that plays hard, always a team that plays sound. What do you have to do to get ready for the Tornadoes after this one? Well, I'm sure they'll be really excited about playing us after watching this this game, you know, and uh, because uh, they'll do a whole lot the same thing that Lenore Ryan did. They'll line up and come right at us, and they'll do it with an option, and they'll do it with uh, with some wrinkles that we haven't seen this year. And, uh, and of course, they're, they're going to be well coached. And... Uh, they're, they're fighting an uphill battle a little bit right now, moving from Division Two to Division Three, you know, which means that he's in a transition period, mm -hmm. and and uh, and he's got a limited number on his squad. And but uh, you can count on Paul Hamilton's teams being well coached and and find a way to create problems for you. Ken Sparks, pleasure as always. No pity parties from here on out. I I agree. Thank you. Let's do let's, let's, let's do that one. <laughs> 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 That's how you close the TV show. For Carson Newman, head football coach Ken Sparks, I'm the boys of the Eagles, Adam Cavalier. This has been the Ken Sparks Show. Thanks for watching. <laughs>